Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the IoT for All podcast. I'm Ryan Chacon, and on today's episode, we're going to talk about the importance of a device for an asset tracking application, what you need to consider, and how to select the right device with Paul Rodwell, the International Business Development Lead for On Asset Intelligence. They are a global leader in supply chain asset management. Really good conversation. This company does some very exciting stuff in the supply chain asset tracking space, so definitely worth checking them out. But before we get into this episode, I would truly appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel if not done so already, and hit that bell icon so you get the latest episodes as soon as they're out. Other than that, let's get on to the episode. Welcome, Paul, to the IT for All podcast. Thanks for being here this week. Thank you, Ryan. Welcome. Yeah, it's great to have you. Um, let's kick this off by having you give a quick introduction about yourself uh, and the company to our audience, if you wouldn't mind. So I'm Paul Rodwell. I'm looking after international business development with On Asset. Been with the company 10 years now um, and still enjoying every day of it. I come from a background of shipping and airlines, uh, over a 30-year career in senior levels, and came across on Asha at a trade show uh, over a decade ago when I was working with an airline and thought, wow, that's something special. And uh, the rest is history. Um, I'm based in the UK on assets, a Texas-based company, uh, so I'm pretty much the lone ranger outside uh, of the organization, but... Uh, we, uh, we've developed significantly over the last 10 years and uh, looking forward to the next 10 years. Fantastic. Tell us a little bit more about what all on asset does and kind of, you know, what makes them unique, what, what you know, kind of role you all play in the space. So we deliver uh, IoT solutions primarily for transport uh, across all modes, uh, international transportation. We've developed a strong niche in the uh, cargo sector with fully compliant devices. Um, and also at the high end of the uh, distribution, global distribution with pharmaceutical focus. But you know, adoption uh, of the technology across, uh, as I mentioned, all uh, modes of transport, air, sea, land, rail. Fantastic. Um, so I wanted to, I think we have a really interesting conversation here that we haven't talked too much about lately, and it's kind of focusing around the device when it comes to asset tracking applications, the importance of them, how to select the right ones, things to think about, et cetera. But I wanted to see if you would mind kind of kicking off the conversation, talking about at a high level, two different points. One is just what is the importance of a device when it comes to an asset tracking application and what is important to consider when, when selecting one? One of the best examples is in pharmaceutical monitoring where, um, Primarily, compliance and validation is a, a requirement in all the pharmaceutical sector. Um, they need to assure themselves that it's compliant with uh, international standards for transportation, but also in terms of quality assurance. So, sets of values are very fine and checked and assured, um, and accuracy and security of the software deployed in monitoring those uh, devices. Another aspect is the ability of that organization to deliver the ongoing service level. A lot of that is hinged on delivering those quality assurances when they're vetting the company. That's one of the biggest challenges. And when it comes to a company out there looking to launch a asset tracking solution or have one built, how do you kind of advise companies or what should companies be thinking about when it comes to selecting the right device? So how to select the right device? If, if that's a question we get asked a lot is just how do I make sure I choose the right one? So what are the key considerations? What should and, and, and kind of just general tips you have for making sure that you're selecting the right device for, for your chosen application? Sure. We, we have a way of looking at it. We can call it real time all the time. So that's where the cellular devices and are ubiquitous, they deliver that level of visibility like a paratrooper. Wherever they land, they wake up and they tell the cloud where they are and they also relay their sense of value. So we call that real time all the time. Um, and we call it the mother. And then we have Bluetooth devices uh, that we call the children and they relay their data, sensor data, through the parent's cellular device. Um, we have hybridizations of that, those two primary components in the in the solution. A, a shipper can choose to use a tracking device that's real-time all the time, put it in their ship, and end-to-end visibility 
apart from when it's in the air and then it's recording and uploading that data when it arrives. With the Bluetooth devices, we they can leverage um, the ability for those Bluetooth devices to record in transit and to, so at the beginning and at the end of the supply chain, they have readers, the, the same gateways that you use in transit, but fixed readers at each, and they can upload that data on arrival autonomously and give them the quality assurance for the entire journey from beginning to end that it fulfills their requirements and they can release that product. Um, we can also augment that increasingly now with a readership, a reader network and across over 200 airports around the world. When those Bluetooth devices are passing through those airports and the uh, gateways are installed in a, a large proportion of the cargo handling facilities in those airports, we augment that visibility through those airports. Okay. And sounds like from... If if I'm listening to this as an audience member and looking to figure out which device to choose, even outside of kind of the devices you all offer, it sounds like there's a lot of different considerations that go into that decision making process. So the form factor, the connectivity type, how often do you need it to be? Like what what the features and functionality of it are, what it's sensing, things like that seem to be pretty important to consider and make sure you have really well thought out prior to bringing in a device to kind of the software side of the solution. Of course, lo- location is one of the key requirements um, for real-time visibility, but it is that sensor array as well, temperature, light, humidity, shock, tilt, um, and the ability for that device to be managed over the air in terms of report periods. Uh, ba- like everything, battery life is critical, uh, field life, and we can manage that uh, battery report period over the air or autonomously as it passes through uh, various geo points around the world. Fantastic. Um, let me ask you about a question that we get uh, often as well. And we've seen a lot of people kind of talking about this is when it comes to the decision between custom versus off the shelf hardware, how often have you kind of encountered that question with a lot of the customers you work with? And what, how do you kind of think about that? Or how should people be thinking about when to go with a custom route versus trying to go off the shelf route when there's something available to them? I think with most, most things uh, off the shelf is, is, the expedient. Uh, any bespoke development is, is challenging. Uh, it takes time. And particularly with uh, international transportation, um, qualification and certification is a, a component that takes time. So any variation on a device that can lead process for qualifying it or certificating it. So that's where off the shelf device is probably the straight opportunity the straight uh, sale yeah that makes sense i think um in our discussions it's kind of just been dependent upon the use case obviously is a pretty big piece to this whole discussion but at the same time um cost time to market you know, how, how what devices are actually available to them um some some use cases are pretty unique in the sense that they need something quite specific and they just don't have devices out there that work for them so um so yeah it's, it's definitely an interesting kind of trade-off at times. Um, but off-the-shelf, I think, is an option a lot of companies are trying to go as more devices kind of get get out into the field um, and then, you know, discovered by by companies looking to adopt these solutions. It's about scale. You know, if we, we've done some bespoke uh, delivery of, of solutions, uh, but it's global deployment across a large scale, uh, that's where it becomes viable. But uh, on, on a smaller scale, uh, off-the-shelf is the... Uh, straightforward decision. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, what are some other considerations and things that people maybe aren't thinking as much about when it comes to either choosing a device, building a device, etc.? I know I actually had a conversation with a guest recently about ESG initiatives. We've also um, I've heard things and from prior discussions around um, the ability to reuse devices um, and kind of why that's important from a sustainability standpoint. So in the world you all kind of work in, what are some other considerations, or I guess even how are those kind of considerations being thought about and why are they so important? It's a good point. Sustainability um, is key uh, in a lot of increasing number of companies in their statements to the market, to their shareholders. Um, one of the recent uh, experiences in this field was a large pharmaceutical company uh, that made ESG statements about uh, sustainability both for their packaging and, of course, 
when we're looking at packaging, tracking devices fall very much into that category because it's a component of monitoring that packaging in transit. They want to ensure that the devices that are being used not only are qualified, but also are reusable. And so our, our suite of devices met that criteria. Um, and they build a program around the ability to dispatch them, recover them at destination, and return them to a, a point where they're redistributed to the origins uh, and reused. And they're getting multiple uses. So when they weigh that up against one way, which is the cost is not that different, but they fulfill a, an important ESG requirement uh, for, sustain for sustainability. We see increasing volumes of uh, landfill um, or devices ending up in landfill. And that's challenging for a manufacturer to um, quantify. We looked at the challenges that we had in the supply of uh, semiconductors, in particular the COVID period, and it just uh, it amplifies this message that uh, we should be trying to reuse these uh, devices rather than just have a one-way solution, a low-cost one-way solution that inevitably ends up in the a landfill recycling process. Yeah, that's been an interesting kind of thing to talk about because um, I don't think many people consider kind of what, what happens to devices or that devices, even in some situations, can be reused. I know there's some probably situations where they can't be, but um, that's definitely uh, an interesting thing that's come up more recently about what happens to the devices when they're not being used. Uh, can you get them back to reuse them? Because then obviously when it comes to shipping and supply chain, you know, they're used to, to get to the destination to, to monitor and track and give visibility, but what happens afterwards? And if you can get them back to reuse them, saves money potentially. Um, and then like you're saying, really contributes to a lot of these sustainability initiatives that companies are focused on right now. Hey, it's one of those safety. We, we work in the field of, of logistics, domestic uh, logistics, international logistics. So our customer base are well versed with logistics. And all we're looking at in terms of a device being reused is another element of that logistic. Is that round trip or that redistribution through service centers. It's not that complex. It's an added layer. But then we all have to face the challenges of sustainability with the materials and components and particularly things like batteries that we use. When it comes to supply chain, visibility and so forth, when it comes with, with tracking of assets, um, there are a lot of different environments in which the assets have to travel through at times, changing networks, different environments that they're in. What is it that, or how do you all kind of think about that and how do you approach or how should people be approaching how to increase visibility across the entire supply chain when it comes to asset tracking solutions? And I know what you all do is, is quite, quite unique in that sense and just love to kind of talk a little bit more about how companies can really enhance that asset visibility across the entire supply chain. Sure. So we, we take we, we take the view that we, we can deliver that visibility down to piece level um, with the the introduction of this mother-child relationship between our cellular devices and our Bluetooth devices. Um, the Bluetooth device has the ability of being placed in a, in a piece and then we can have multiple pieces in a consignment and they're all talking, they're beaconing their uh, data, and they're picked up by a gateway. The gateway can be shipped in transit with those devices, or they can be have gateways at various lengths in that supply chain to monitor those goods as they pass through those facilities. Um, that's how we extend that visibility to um, consignments in transit, uh, and it gives that layer of additional uh, security. But it's also the automation about those the messaging that each of those pieces is delivering. We have a, num a number of customers who are taking that data uh, through our APIs and they're looking at um, passes through gateways to generate uh, events in their systems and follow uh, rather than uh, having a manual process where people are checking goods in with barcodes. This is all done autonomously as the uh, each piece passes through those various uh, gateways in the supply chain. Perfect. Uh, one of the last questions I want to ask you before we wrap up here is just around challenges that you all see 
in the space and how you approach them, how people should be thinking about approaching them, advice for them, that kind of thing. Um, and one of the areas that I know comes up quite often is the ability to integrate a solution with a customer's current system, current technologies, et cetera, um, and ensuring that an IoT system is integrated with those is other systems is critical to the success. How, how do you all approach that? Or, or, or what kind of challenges have you seen when it comes to that area of um, kind of deployments that, you know, people need to be thinking about or, or tackling? What we deliver is, is, is visibility. The customers want to know where they book, are, are they in the right place at the right time? If they're not, what are the contingencies? Increasingly, that, that's all done through integration. So a, a large proportion of our customers are taking data through our API or data forwarding, and that's integrated with their systems, and it becomes a key component of that visibility to augment their existing uh, transport management systems and other methods of uh, monitoring their supply chain. So what, what, we, what we're delivering is that um, autonomous element. They're not relying any longer on feed from uh, their shipping providers, their transport providers, but they're having a whole layer of uh, visibility that they control uh, and increasingly integrate into their uh, global distribution network. So one of the last questions I want to kind of bring up and, and talk about was, was is scale. The challenges that are associated with scaling and advice you have for how companies can increase the likelihood of success once they get to scale. How do you all kind of approach that what advice do you have for companies kind of trying to tackle that or prepare themselves to scale? Scale is about identifying the key aspects of what the company is looking to deliver and enhance in this global supply chain or domestic supply chain. So it's taking devices, am I going to monitor every consignment in real time or am I going to put monitors inside of that to that, those shipments and capture that data at various points throughout that supply chain. Um, scale is, is can be huge. Once you start introducing piece level, the volume of data is huge. Uh, that's a consideration that needs to uh, go into the overall planning um, and also the volume of devices in circulation. And if we're looking at that ESG component, how quickly can we turn those around and get those uh, send back to base, charged, and reused. Uh, th those are the really important points uh, that, that need to be considered. Absolutely. Yeah, scale's interesting. I mean, it, the, the more prep you have and the more correct decisions you can make earlier on in your development of your solution, your devices, et cetera, the better you're going to be when you get to scale. And I think that uh, that's something that a lot of companies are really trying to think thoroughly through so that the, once they get through the pilot phase, they're not kind of stuck either redesigning or rehab, you know, having to build... Um, additional things that are going to increase costs and potentially decrease the likelihood that they'll succeed once they start scaling this to hundreds of thousands plus you know devices the most important aspect really is the is the um, operating uh, we 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 increasingly see the single point of failure being the human element and not the machine or device element it, it's when uh, processes break down and the humans forget to switch it on forget to charge it, forget to put it inside. Those those are the key considerations really in uh, volume operations. Fantastic. Well, Paul, uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to kind of to jump on here and, and talk about a lot of this stuff with our audience. Uh, for our audience who is interested in learning more about what you all do at All Asset, kind of just follow up with questions from this conversation, what's the best way that they can do that or reach out? Uh, come through our website. Uh, all, all of our contacts are there. Um, or email me direct if you're good to put that uh, email contact into the uh, program. Perfect. Well, Paul, thank you so much for taking the time. Really appreciate it and uh, excited to get this episode out to our audience. Thank you, Ryan.